Lindu and Jamie, if you have a construction sign on your lawn, police say it's actually a sign for crooks that you might have an insurance check coming into your mailbox. This is a thick wooded area where the possible bodies of Asia Johnson and Lester Hobbs were found. The state's attorney general accuses Republican leaders of playing politics. As I get down in here, this specific one can hold about 10 people if everyone's standing up in here. This top load washer is the most popular. It's not energy efficient, but goes for 379. But the cheapest energy efficient one is 499. I'm at Bass Pro Shop where stores like this one are trying to reel in customers. Video games like this one on the Wii are actually sold out. You're trying to drive in this cold. Some people already having trouble with their engines, some even having trouble starting their engines. The space heater started the fire and the flames spread to the walls and up into the attic. And now it's, you can see, pretty frozen on the inside. I have cocoa slushy at this point. How do you guys do when it's 110 out there? You sweat. What do you think? Job experts say that's more reason to stand out. <laughs> There's money at every stop, money along the way. Crooks call this cross-country pimping. Teenage girls get taken along for the ride. Oklahoma City police say one in five girls selling sex at truck stops is younger than 18. Where are you at, driver? Hello, this new truck stop I opened up. Major interstates make the metro a hot spot. You know you've got a great customer base in Oklahoma City because you constantly have a high volume of trucks moving through. Well, how old was you when you started? 15. 15. We give this trucker our undercover camera and he invites a prostitute in his cab. She calls herself Randy. What makes you want to do that? Uh, kind of got made to do it. Made to do it. Yeah. And then I just kind of stuck and then I quit. Started. Randy did not say how she started down this road, but police say her story may be typical. A vulnerable girl lured from her neighborhood by a pimp. Detective Rob Kimmett works undercover tracking sex crimes. Maybe mom's in jail or dad's a drunk or, or, or there's nobody. There's no mom and dad. Hey, what's going on, girl? That exploitative predator does is he fills that gap. Kimmett says teenage girls like these may be beaten and forced to sell their bodies. To talk to these girls, I wear a hidden camera and walk the lot. I weave around the trucks as if I'm available. Huh? The pimps eye the scene and their girls every move. What's your name? Cherry. Cherry. Has it been slow? Or? Yeah. How long have you been working this one for? A minute? What's that? A trucker calls me over. What do I start? How much you pay the other girl? 40? The youngest girls fetch top dollar. The girls get nothing. The pimp makes twice as much money off of a girl like that. Busting the pimps and saving the girls can be tough. Police call any child trafficking sting the perfect storm. The John, the teenager, and the pimp have to be in the same place at once for police to close on in. And it virtually never happens. You've got that night, maybe a weekend. Tops. Police say most girls do not know a way out. They're scared of their pimps, scared of police, or have nowhere else to turn. And they either get drug addicted and commit suicide, or they stay in the game until they can't play anymore. Randy tells this trucker why she wants out. I just got offered that. Get married. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's a nice friend. Guiding light. Yeah. He yeah. wants to save you from the life on but most girls who say they'll leave never do. We had a house together and I said, um, give me a couple of months. And you'll be, you'll be done with it? Yeah. Flea market shoppers, beware. What you buy may be stolen. Literally everything in the booth was mine. It was past in jewelry. Kathy Nichols says she found her stolen stuff at this flea market in the metro. Her home was ransacked six months before. I asked them where they got their things and she said different sources. Kathy says the manager did not offer to give her stuff back. So Kathy and I went in to find her things. Do not turn that on in here. The owner was not happy Kathy came back. My reputation is on the line. And this is like, please come in and, and she lie about me. She wanted to come I in. Didn't lie about she wanted me. to come in and what? She wanted to come in and find 
the goods that yeah, please, were look. stolen. Would you like an escort, ma'am? No, I went back there and it's not there anymore. Isn't it your job to ask the vendor where they got no, their stuff? No, of visible? course it isn't. Why in the world would I do that? This one. Should I ask her where she got this? You think I should? Oklahoma City Police say they do not require flea market vendors to track what they sell. We don't act, uh, actually go out and actively check flea markets for the stolen property. Um, that's not to say that stolen property doesn't periodically come through flea markets. One former FBI agent says that leaves flea markets as open markets for thieves. Right now we're going to go into Old Paris Flea Markets, one of the larger ones in the metro. I'm going to be in there with Jeff Jenkins, former FBI agent who used to uh, visit various flea markets to find smuggled goods. I've got a hidden pen cam on me and uh, we'll see what we can find. I can get it for your brand new man. This vendor would not say where he got his supplies. We have shop uh, maybe you can run the phone number down there. Moving inside. Jenkins wanted to buy a $4,500 necklace. He says this vendor would not give him proper warranty. Then the vendor tells Jeff about a friend who can give a good deal on a TV. We've got a man. A TV that would normally cost hundreds more. Jenkins warns buyers to ask vendors hard questions. I want to know where their supplier house is and where you're getting them from. As for Kathy, the owner of the flea market could not find the phone number of the vendor who had her stuff. I don't have time to go to every single pawn shop in Oklahoma City. Kathy has a warning for flea market shoppers. And you know that it's used items, you don't know where it, you know, you have no idea where it comes from. And now it's not a medically recognized condition, but experts say it is the signs of a full-blown addiction. A way to communicate. And now it's like another form of email. And a way to connect. Stalking people. I, it's just a bad habit that everyone does. But how much of Facebook, Twitter, and MySpace is too much? Good to see you guys. Meet Ryan Parrott, chef and co-owner of Iguana Mexican Grill. Co-workers say he has a Twitter problem. I walk around the restaurant doing that. We sat down to chat. But Ryan had to tweet first. Is that your Twitter on your phone pulled up? Uh-huh. As we set up. Test, test. We're good. We're good. Yes. Okay. Okay. What are you looking at right now? How many times do you tweet a day? On average, 20 or 30. I mean, I've done it. I've put as much as 80. That's basically once every 12 minutes. Yeah. I'm getting messages here. What would happen if your iPhone was away from you for five hours? Probably wouldn't, but I'd probably stop breathing. Ryan also says he's woken up at 3 a.m. just to check his tweets. Psychologists say losing sleep is a telltale sign you're addicted. Some social experts say that this new tool may make people compulsive who were never addicts before. It's so rewarding. And, and, and it also makes them feel somehow better about themselves. Dr. Melvin Price is a psychology professor at Oklahoma City University and a practicing psychologist. He says if you're online too much, you could be using social media to fill a void. The internet doesn't reject you. This anonymity not only provides for opportunities to fulfill one's inner needs for self-esteem, it can become like anything else. A habit. Price has some patience with internet addictions, and he says they neglect their personal lives to spend time online. Price says some cases need professional help. Others can be fixed by setting personal limits on your internet life, like using a timer. So sometimes you may just need a Facebook or Twitter vacation and make a social connection the old-fashioned way. Get addicted to like going out with friends. Facebook's not going to go anywhere. You can check in another time.